Today we're going to talk about simple or traumatic bone cysts. Simple bone cysts are also commonly known as traumatic bone cysts. However, they have many other names including solitary bone cyst, hemorrhagic bone cyst, idiopathic bone cavity, unicameral bone cyst, and osteodystrophic bone cyst to name a few. These are thought to be reactive lesions from trauma with abnormal healing of a hemorrhage within bone. However, most are considered to have an unknown etiology and pathogenesis. Radiographically, they appear as uniocular intraosseous pseudocysts that are either empty or fluid-filled with rare expansion of the jaw and no cortical breach. The lesions are generally found in younger patients during the second to third decade of life. However, 15% of cases are found in individuals above 40 years of age. They are most commonly located in the molar premolar region of the mandible, present asymptomatically, are slow growing, and tend to be found in males more commonly than females. The extremities can also be affected during growth spurts. During this time, the proximal humerus, proximal femur, ilium, and cancellous bones are affected most. Its histological findings include inflammatory mediators if fluid is present. The pseudocyst walls form from fibrovascular stroma with immature bone, cementum-like material, osteoclast giant cells, and mesenchymal cells found deep to the stroma. Traumatic bone cysts are incidentally found on imaging performed during routine clinical radiography since they rarely present with clinical expansion. They are mostly asymptomatic but can occasionally cause pain or tenderness, especially if secondarily infected in association with florid cemento-osseous dysplasia. Although it is a slow-growing lesion, they may become large if not found during routine appointments. However, there is no evidence that they can cause fracture of the jaws. It is also noted that the pulps of involved teeth remain vital, so be careful in diagnosing any possible pain in the affected region. Radiographic presentation includes a characteristic scalloping border between the roots of adjacent teeth, typically in the posterior mandible region. The lesion's border is non-corticated to thinly corticated and has little to no effects on surrounding structures and soft tissue. Although there is generally no expansion present, it is seen on rare occasions along with teeth displacement. The first image we'll be looking at is part of a panograph of a 16-year-old female patient with a typical presentation of a traumatic bone cyst. Here to the right, you can see a uniocular radiolucency in the molar region of the mandible with characteristic scalloping along the molar roots with no sign of root resorption. When biopsied, the cavity was found to be empty and lacked an epithelial lining. The second case here involves a 16-year-old male. The panograph indicates a well-defined, thinly corticated uniocular radiolucency extending from the distal surface of tooth 29 to the distal surface of tooth 30 at mid-root level. It extends towards the inferior border of the mandible. The lamina dura is intact without any sign of tooth displacement and root resorption. A periapical radiograph was also taken of this same patient of the premolar region showing a clear image of the lesion involving the roots of tooth 29 and 30. Again, you can see the well-defined, thinly corticated lesion with characteristic scalloping around the roots, all while the lamina dura and other anatomical structures are maintained. The last image of the case is a mandibular occlusal radiograph that shows no expansion of the buccal and lingual cortical plates in the mandibular right posterior region. When diagnosing traumatic bone cysts, it is important to include odontogenic karyotosis, central giant cell granulomas, periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia, and malignancy on the differential diagnosis list. Comparing odontogenic karyotosis to simple bone cysts, both lesions may grow within the bone marrow spaces and may have scallop borders. OKCs have a higher likelihood than do simple bone cysts of root resorption and cortical expansion, and additionally, 
OKCs tend to be multiocular, with 40% of uniocular lesions are associated with unerupted teeth. In terms of histopathology, OKCs are lined with parakeratinized epithelium, whereas simple bone cysts are pseudocysts, meaning they lack an epithelial lining. Histopathologically, OKCs possess basal cells with a characteristic picket fence or tombstone appearance and lack reedy edges. The example of OKC on the right displays a multiocular mandibular lesion causing root displacement and potential root resorption. The second differential to consider when evaluating potential simple bone cysts is central giant cell granuloma. Central giant cell granulomas tend to have a variable radiographic appearance, but tend to be multiocular, although uniocular lesions can also appear. Central giant cell granulomas cause expansion and have a greater tendency than do simple bone cysts to cause tooth displacement. These lesions may be aggressive or non-aggressive, with aggressive lesions showing destruction of the cortical plate along with pain and paresthesia. Since the radiographic appearance is not specific, final diagnosis is based on histopathology. The example of central giant cell granuloma on the right of this slide displays a multiocular lesion causing tooth displacement and expansion, characteristics commonly associated with the aggressive form of this lesion. The third differential to consider when diagnosing simple bone cysts is periapical cementoosseous dysplasia. Periapical cementoosseous dysplasia, or PCOD, is most often found in middle-aged individuals, more often in females than males. African Americans have a higher prevalence and is often found in the mandibular anterior region. These lesions appear as a mixed-density mixed lesion during the developmental stage. In comparison, simple bone cysts tend to be discovered in younger age patients and in the mandibular poster, posterior region. They also, though, can appear as mixed density lesions during the developmental stage. PCODs can cause widening of the periodontal ligament space with or without the loss of the lamina dura. Additionally, PCODs can cause root expansion and root resorption in rare cases. Simple bone cysts, on the other hand, scallop between the root apices without causing any discontinuation of the lamina dura. A typical example of PCOD can be seen in the picture on the right of the slide. There is a mixed radiolucent radiopaque lesion in the mandibular anterior region. Discontinuation of the lamina dura and root involvement is noted. The fourth differential diagnosis to take into consideration during a diagnosis of simple bone cysts is malignancy. Malignant lesions of the jaws, unlike simple bone cysts, cause widening of the periodontal ligament spaces and discontinuation or complete loss of the lamina dura. Additionally, characteristics such as rapid bone destruction and irregular bone resorption are common features of malignancy. Simple bone cysts, however, tend to res respect anatomical features and boundaries, allowing for the lamina dura to remain intact, not causing expansion not involving root resorption, and not involving root displacement. To the right is an example of a malignancy, specifically chondrosarcoma. Significant alveolar bone destruction, root resorption, and thinning of the lower border of the mandible are all noted. Treatment of choice is to curette the bone walls, which results in a short-term healing. However, some cases result in spontaneous healing without any treatment at all. If the lesion is treated surgically, the recurrence rate is very rare. If there is recurrence, it is generally within three months after surgery. The recurrence rate is much higher if it is involved with multiple cysts with a consequential 71% reoccurrence, or if this lesion is associated with fluorocemento-osseous dysplasia in which a 75% reoccurrence rate is observed. Thank you very much for your time and attention.